Hey guys, today I'm reacting to Japan's 64 billion dollar gamble on levitating bullet trains. Explained. So this should be pretty interesting, and uh, yeah, let's uh get into the video. Okay, and please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. Now let's get into it. I think that's Mount Fuji right there. This is a Japanese bullet train. If you want to get somewhere in this country fast, then it's got you covered. And I'm jealous, so I hope the USA builds more bullet trains, high speed rails. Uh, I did a video on the California one and why it's taken so long. I'll link it in the description box below. And yeah, I just, I really like uh, trains and stuff, so I hope the USA builds more of it. An engineering marvel formed in the aftermath of the Second World War, it's carried more than 10 billion passengers at speeds of up to 320 kilometers an hour and helped create the world's third largest economy. But that's not enough for Japan, and the country is now building the world's fastest passenger train, a system that'll move at twice the speed of the bullet trains and cut journey times in half, all by doing away with one fairly fundamental component, wheels. Using magnetic levitation, these new trains will hover 10 centimeters above the track, eliminating the friction that comes with being in contact with the rails. But the new line has pro That's epic. proved deeply controversial, grappling with delays, skyrocketing construction costs, and a fierce debate. That'll happen, but you should still continue doing this. Over environmental concerns. Ooh. Now nearing completion, the world is awaiting to see whether the project will successfully hover above its challenges and make a quantum leap for transportation, or prove a step too far. Your is annoying, but you gotta continue. Japan kind of knows a thing or two about trains. The country was the first in the world to develop high-speed rail, with the construction of the Tokaido Shinkansen line between Tokyo and Osaka in 1959. Back then, the Japanese people, and indeed the rest of the world, were skeptical of the country's massive investment into rail, and many thought it would soon be outdated in an exciting new era of air travel and highways. No, highways not a good idea. Nope, nope, nope. And uh, trains much more efficient. Cheaper and also less polluting for the environment. You can electrify them nowadays. So. Nevertheless, the first high speed and just way more efficient than how much people they can bring. Speed line opened in October 1964, ready for Tokyo's first hosting of the Olympics. It cut the travel time between Japan's two biggest cities from nearly seven hours to just under four. Proving an instant success, the line served more than a hundred million passengers in less than three years. That same trip on a modern bullet train now takes two and a half hours. When the new Chaoshan Canton line opens, it'll be done in just 67 minutes. At full speed, the Chaoshan Canton trains will move at 500 kilometers an hour, although a 2015 test run hit a world record 603 kilometers an hour. Now, it's pretty widely agreed that those kind of speeds are basically impossible for a conventional bullet train to hit, they eventually will become limited by the friction that's created by their wheels. To solve that problem, Japanese engineers looked back in time to a technology that's actually been around since the early 1900s. Magnetic levitation, also known as maglev. In fact, concepts for maglev trains date back to the 60s, and the world's first and so far only commercial maglev line has been in operation since 2004 running between Shanghai's city centre and its airport. The Central Japan Railway Company, or JR Central, has modernised this technology using superconducting magnets. Electromagnets are cooled to minus 269 degrees, allowing the trains to levitate higher above the tracks. But the trains need to be moving at speed before the magnets come in. Once the train reaches 150 km an hour by itself, Maglev kicks in and the carriage it's almost like a plane taking off a little bit that's just lifted off its rubber wheels. The train then interacts with a set of coils in the track, one used to levitate its mass and the other to propel it forward. Now, without the wheels, the carriages can travel at incredible speeds. 
The trains are also completely autonomous, controlled by the track rather than a driver, a measure which, it's claimed, makes collisions or accidents far less likely. The Tokyo to Nagoya line has been under construction since 2014 and is expected to open in 2027. A further extension linking Tokyo to Osaka will begin to be built straight afterwards and open as early as 2037, 10 years oh, that's a while away, ahead of schedule. Unlike the existing bullet trains whose tracks hug the Japanese coastline, Chaoshing Kansen will be 90% underground, cutting beneath the Southern Alps. 256 kilometers of the 285 kilometer long line will be in tunnels. The reasons for this are twofold. Firstly, maglev trains work better when they travel in the straightest line possible, and burrowing beneath the mountains avoids Japan's more earthquake-prone coast. Although in taking this approach, JR Central has ended up digging some of the deepest tunnels Japan has ever seen. That's raised a number of environmental concerns, especially in the Shizuoka prefecture, where tunneling threatens the basin of the Oi River, a major water source for the region. While environmental studies have found that the risk of disturbing the basin is low, local governments have criticised those reports for being, in their words, insufficient and hasty. Ah, some nimbies, not in my backyard, people. No, you gotta go through with it. Of course, do more studies and make it safer, but you gotta go through with it. These people will just find any excuse. The incumbent governor of Shizuoka even ran on a platform opposing the railway, successfully winning an election in June 2021, where Chaoshin Kansen was a key issue. This controversy, combined with unexpected hurdles in the construction of new stations, has taken the project's cost from $13.7 billion to a staggering $64 billion, making it one of the most expensive megaprojects ever undertaken in the country. The hefty price tags now leading many in Japan to question whether the new line is worth it at all. Indeed, there are quite a few drawbacks to Japan's maglev. Once completed, it'll be more expensive to run than regular high-speed trains because it consumes more energy, though you could argue that it will enable greater economic growth. The trains also won't be able to hold as many passengers within their smaller carriages, and they won't travel as frequently. Traditional bullet trains run on the Tokyo Osaka line roughly every three minutes. Because maglev track switches take more time, it'll only be possible to run a maglev train once every 10 minutes. Japanese rail companies have also previously been able to make a lot of money by selling their technology overseas. But a noticeable new player has emerged on the scene since the advent of the first bullet train back in 1964. China. It's now the king of high-speed rail and the country is home to two-thirds of the world's entire high-speed network. While none of its intercity lines are maglev, China is beginning to develop its own version of the technology. In July 2021, it tested a maglev train that reached 600 kilometers an hour, almost breaking the record set by Japan. That train could theoretically go from Beijing to Shanghai in three and a half hours, faster than the four and a half hours it takes by plane. China doesn't need to buy Japan's technology, and the rest of the world is still playing catch up with regular high-speed rail. True, especially the US, unfortunately. So, I mean, the US is the Excel Express in the Northeast, you know, but still, we need way more. And that area needs to be faster, even. So, some people say, oh, the US is too large and too spacious. But uh, my argument is there are areas of the US which aren't dense enough for public transportation. And so, those areas should get it. But uh, that's not going to happen for some reason. It's, it's happening very slowly. Um, another thing is, even areas that are not dense, if you build public transportation, people will come eventually. It'll get dense over time. Why is Japan so intent on building this maglev line, and why did the government grant JR Central a loan to finish it 10 years ahead of schedule? If Chaoshin Kansen is successful, then it has the potential to create a commutable distance between the country's two largest cities, linking the regions of Tokyo and Osaka in a pretty profound way. It's a prize that's becoming increasingly alluring around the world. 
Megacities are systematically being made of China's Pearl River Delta through strategically placed infrastructure. While less formally, the boundaries between cities in the northeastern United States, from Washington DC up to Boston, are being blurred. It's the same in Western Europe. Oh, true, yeah, like a mega megapolis, yeah, like the whole north northeast quarter in the US, the Boss Wash, Boston, New York, and Washington DC and Philadelphia, all these cities, yeah, yeah. Merging major cities like this has the potential to create economic powerhouses on a scale we've never seen before. When the bullet train first began construction more than half a century ago, that's a really pretty train too as well, I would say. Oh, the world ridiculed it. But it ultimately allowed Japan to grow, connecting regions and sharing prosperity. In the decade that followed its opening, Japan went from an economy that was just 10% the size of the US to the world's second largest. Of course, we'll need to wait and see if this new line Yeah, it was the second largest and you were so scared for a bit. And can Didn't levitate really the country to further success. But moving people between major cities in record-breaking time would open up a whole new world. Serious. If you enjoyed this video and you want to get more... That was super interesting. Let's check out some of the comments down below. Okay. It's crazy to think about it. When it's done, it'll take me more time to get from my home in the Tokyo suburbs, about 30 kilometers from central Tokyo, to the Maglev station, than it takes to go from Tokyo to Osaka, which is almost 600 kilometers away. Can't wait. Epic. Yep. Um, they say trains on the Tokyo Osaka line run every three minutes. Does that mean you can go every three minutes from Tokyo to Osaka? Or do they count both directions? If you watch the rail, you will see a train every three minutes. Oh, I absolutely love this. The only thing stopping me from taking them more in the UK is that the ticket prices are insane. If they were affordable, I'd ride them all the time. So true, ticket prices in the UK are ridiculously stupid. They need to be cheaper everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Wheels? Where we're going, we don't need wheels. Chief engineer, probably. I love traveling on these when I went on holiday to Japan. They're so quiet and efficiently run, it was actually quite soothing. It'll move at twice the speed and cut times in half. I did the math for a few seconds and I can confirm that it checks out. In Australia, we're still debating if white speed rail is viable or to work at a devil. Unfortunately. You gotta build them, you just gotta build them. Always speed forward, you know? Technology infrastructure is the name of the game. That'll make your country prosperous. And helps the people. The politicians are still trying to figure out how it makes them rich. When they do, we will get high speed rail. Same in Sweden. Politicians here have been discussing about trains going up to 320 kilometers an hour for years. After all these discussions, the speed was decreased to 250 kilometers an hour. And completion is unknown. They've started on the lines, but no one knows if it will ever be completed. Meanwhile, Japan will live in the 27th century. Honestly, you just build it. Seriously, it doesn't matter if it's not dense enough because the density will come. If you build it, people will come. Make sure it's nice, cheap, people will come. I also live in Sweden and I know for a fact that the Gat Nyabana, if that's what you're talking about, is well on its way to completion because it's already reached my town and the biggest city near it. Most of our trains are still around from half a century ago, embarrassing. I love to travel by train, sadly the ticket price is still forcing me to use airplanes and the new high speed train tickets predicted to cost 50% more. I'd rather see more night trains with sleeping cabins. Seeing that something this fantastic is controversial in Japan while we're spending nearly double that on HS2, which is only around half as quick and much shorter, is quite hilarious. My Mars and the trains in Australia are awful, so it was incredible when I went to Japan and rode on a Shinkansen from Tokyo to Kyoto. It was, small, it was so smooth, the interior was really nice and the views were beautiful. 
Don't tell Elon Musk that Japan has already mastered full stop driving. It's called a train. Shh. Yeah, Hyperloop is just a little bit. B1M talking about train again? Let's go. I agree. Let's go. Trains are just awesome. All aboard. Wendover has planes. B1M has trains. He's just staking his territory. Japan spoken beat. You know what? Fuck gravity. Ah uh, yes, Japan, the country that actually builds stuff instead of just inventing it, saying it's not viable, and then selling to foreign investors like we do here in Germany. You can say whatever you want with these. If you haven't noticed their economy, building stuff to build stuff is a bad idea. Love the production, also enjoyed the insight that this is not just about speed, but expanding the radius of commuters. Magnetic levitation, also known as maglev, shows a video of quantum locking. The demonstration was to show how friction affects momentum, and not for you to compare it to viral YouTube videos. <laughs> Japan has their priority straight, agreed. Chao Shinkansen? <laughs> it's pronounced Chuo, meaning central. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it was a more prepper. <laughs> Chuo being pronounced as Chow, just a man though. <laughs> Looking forward to ride this ride on this train someday, at least when going to Nagoya. Osaka is my favorite city. Living in Tokyo, can't wait for this. In my opinion, this train system is also like the Shinkansen in the 60s. Everybody was criticizing it until it opened to the public and started generating enormous profits and economic benefits. Japan should not cancel all the latest project. Agreed. Well, I've been on a levitating train before, and they're super fast and stable. Japan is already an expert on trains, and with this gamble, it will pay off. And I think people would take more trains than planes for the cost difference. Finally, a country that understands that public transport is one of the most important components of city infrastructure. Agreed. Oh, I love Japan. I like their determination, dedication, and discipline. Meanwhile, in India, we only heard the name of bullet train seven years ago. That's it. Wasn't India building a bullet train with help of Japan? Shinzo Abe came to India and inaugurated the project with Modi. Unlike Hyperloop, Maglev actually exists. <laughs> even go 200 kilometers per hour. Ah, uh, okay. We need something like this in Europe. It does not have to be maglev. It does not have to exceed 20 kilometers per hour. Just additional high-speed rail connecting all the major cities in Europe would be would already be amazing. Same for the U.S. Honestly, we need more of it. Okay, so I really enjoyed this video, and if you enjoyed my reaction, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.